Hey, Agent here. One of the questions I get the most on my Instagram is, what is war driving? So today I want to answer this question and just give a quick overview to war driving and some of the devices used. So what is war driving? Simply, war driving is the act of using a smartphone, laptop, or other purpose-built device like this war driver here by Jay Hewitt on Instagram to drive around searching for Wi-Fi access points and noting them and their locations via GPS. But why? Why do we do this? Personally, I do it as a hobby to try and get as high as I can on Wiggle Wi-Fi or Wiggle.net where you can see I am currently ranked 747 and have found a total of 238,000 unique Wi-Fi's that no one else has found. So I do it to rank up on this list and then to just enjoy and learn more about Wi-Fi and building these different devices. Before we take a look at all of these devices individually, let's talk a little bit about Wiggle.net. This is the website where many war drivers come to upload their data to be ranked like I told you, I was at 747. As you can see at this map, all of these little purple dots in yellow are Wi-Fi that has been found. So let's zoom into one of these bigger cities. You notice that just about every roadway in this area has been driven and has had Wi-Fi collected on it even boats. Uh, I, I did war driving on a cruise. Uh, that was really cool. I could pick up Wi-Fi from a mile off of the shore. But look at this. It's just super densely populated. Luckily, I live in an area where there's not very many war drivers, so I'm able to go and find many areas that have never been war driven. Let's see if we can find a smaller city that has less war drivers that's too small okay here we go so you notice that the majority of the war drivers in this city here are along the main roads so there's plenty of places that can still be war driven in cities like this. And luckily I live in an area that most of my cities that are around me are like that. But let's find one point and kind of show you what kind of data is gathered. So see that this one was a hidden SSID. So it's just blank. We got the time it was found, the type of encryption that was used, the quality of the signal of whoever found it. Here we go. Here's one that has the SSID. Martini. The time it was found, the last time it was found. So e even if you've, if the Wi-Fi point's been found before, when you upload the data, it'll tell you the most recent time it's been found. The encryption it uses the channel it was on. Um, we can go to stats and we can see kind of what percentage of users or Wi-Fi have been found with what encryption. So I, I hear a lot of people saying uh, it can't be broken or why, why do this? It's useless. Well, gathering this data just allows us to kind of see where everybody's at. We can see that only 0.12% use WPA3. The majority of people use WPA2, but WPA2 has been out for a lot longer. And it's good to see that WPA and WEP have just about been done away with. There are almost a trillion unique Wi-Fi's found in the database. Let's look at 
my personal stats. So as I mentioned, I'm 747. I'm ranked 42 for the month. I was ranked 40 last month. This month I have found 34,000 points. Last month I found 46,000 points. And th these are unique points. Let's see. I have seen 400,000 unique points. Or not unique, but just 400,000 points total. But only 200 of them, 200,000 of them have been unique. We also collect GSM networks and Bluetooth, and I have found over 500 and almost 600,000 unique Bluetooth points, which the War Driver has really helped with that. For some reason, it just picks up more Bluetooth than my cell phone ever did. But you can kind of see my progression. I started back in, yeah, I guess it was August of last year. And it's just, it, it was flat for a while, but it's gone up and up and up. And really, this is just the Bluetooth. Right, ar right around this time is where I first started using my war driver. Up until then, though, every bit of this was found using the Android app for Wiggle. So another cool thing about Wiggle Wi-Fi is we have groups. For those that follow me on Instagram, you'll be you'll recognize some of these names. This is the group I'm currently part of. We have Ringmaster and Axon, Dark Duck, just all sorts of them. But so as these groups, everything we find while we're in the group counts towards the group's count. So this group of mainly Instagram is ranked 26 in the world for wiggle groups. And some of these wiggle groups just have, you know, 242 members. We have 24. So now a little more about these devices. Here we have the War Driver by Jay Hewitt. This is the completed form of it. It starts out as one of these PCBs. And you add two ESP32s to it, which these antennas attach to, a screen, GPS unit, a SIM unit so that you can uh, gather GSM locations as well. And then another simple device, purpose-built device you see a lot of people using is taking a Raspberry Pi 4, or any Raspberry Pi really, uh, it doesn't take a whole lot, a USB GPS unit, and a handful of these USB Wi-Fi cards. These two are both Panda Wireless, but another commonly used one is the Alpha Wi-Fi's. This is also a Pi 4, but it has a screen, so you can kind of monitor what's going on through the, using the screen. The most simple way to get started is using a cell phone. You have to use Android. iPhone is just not friendly with using Wi-Fi for war driving. But I haven't had an issue with this, which is a Pixel 7 Pro. I have a Nexus 6P that I also use, and it's running Android 8. This Pixel 7 Pro is running the current most current version of Android, which I think is Android 13, and the app works just fine on both of them. And there are a handful of apps, which I'll probably go into on in a different video. Next, I'm going to show you this picture. This one is by Dustin Finn on Twitter. This is his war driving build rig. He uses two single board computers. Both of them are Zima boards. And each of them, you can see, have a eight-slot carrier board for these Wi-Fi cards, like you would typically find, and you know, like a just on a standard motherboard. So he has those 16 
Wi-Fi cards there to capture and watch each channel without having to hop in between a ton of different channels. He has a Hack 5 Wi-Fi coconut to monitor all of the 2.4 gigahertz uh, channels that we can use. And then he has a Intel NUC. I, th I believe it's underneath the Wi-Fi coconut there. And it's used to consolidate all of the data so he can update, upload later. And then in this one, this is called the Teenage Dirtbag, and it was created by at Panic Acid on Twitter. You can also find more info on it on at panicacid.com. And for the last build I just showed you, you can find that at busysignal.io. And I'll have all these links in the description. So this Teenage Dirtbag by Panic Acid, it has one Zima board in it, which you can't really see because all the antennas are folded up. You can kind of see it down in the bottom right corner, or bottom left corner, I'm sorry. But he has a 12 slot carrier board. So with that one Zima board, he has 12 Wi-Fi cards on it. But then he also has a Wi-Fi coconut in the middle. So he can monitor the majority of the uh, channels as well for the different Wi-Fi's. But these are just a few options. There are many people out there building stuff. Uh, here's a quick picture, and I forget their name on Twitter, but again, it'll be in the description, and I'll, I'll write it right next to this. But they have come up with a, P a custom PCB like this, but it has, I think, 16 ESP32s, so it monitors each channel of the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. Another common question I get about war driving on my Instagram is the legality of it. And I'm not a lawyer, nor is this legal advice, but here's what ChatGPT says. And again, they, this is not legal advice. ChatGPT will tell you that everything they obtain may not be true anymore, and it's old information, and ChatGTP can be confidently wrong. But from my research, this is pretty accurate what I have found. In some countries and jurisdictions, war driving may be illegal if it is done without the owner's permission or is used to gain unauthorized access to a network or steal sensitive information. However, the legality of war driving can vary depending on where you are and what you do with the information you collect. For example, in the United States, it is legal to war drive, but it is illegal to use the information obtained to access a network or steal sensitive information. Also, laws may be different if the war driver is using a company equipment or company time. It is important to check the laws in your specific country or region before engaging in war driving, and it is always best to obtain permission before accessing any network. So, Generally, it's, illegal, it's legal, but you do need to kind of watch what you do. Um, these devices, as they are, are set up just for war driving. I can't crack into a network with them. Yes, they can be modified to do so, but that takes a lot more know-how. And really, cracking a password, a properly set password with proper complexities to it, can take a long time and a much more powerful machine than any of this right here. If you like war driving or would like to learn a little more about it, give me a subscribe. I will be making many more videos. I plan to make one on getting started using just the iPhone, building Raspberry Pis to war drive. I'm going to do a video on completing another war driver by Jay Hewitt. And in one of my upcoming videos, I will be giving away a whole kit by of everything needed to complete one of these war drivers by Jay Hewitt which you can find more about these on at wardriver.uk if you want to kind of look into that before I even get to that video. So in closing, never stop learning.